So this one is called what you need to know about Metroid Fusion. Again, another video from Zeltroid. I would say here we go, but I need to do something real quick. All right, real quick. All right. Man, isn't it an awful time to be a Metroid fan? Yo, what's up, Pizza? I can't recall a time where <laughs> Wait, Nintendo what? has ever shown this much love and confidence in this franchise, as they're not True. only placing Metroid in front of all of their promotions. Wait, did content, I say what it, what, what it was called? It's called What You Need to Know About Metroid Prime Fusion. Okay, maybe I did say it, okay. Fuck. Anyway. Uh, continue to get new releases and re-releases. The exciting news that recently broke is that the Game Boy Advance's Metroid Fusion will be coming to the Nintendo Switch as a part of the online expansion pass. It drops yep, on March 9th, well, on March which is actually 9. a pretty Already big day out. for Nintendo, as the Mario Kart DLC tracks and the latest Mario Movie Direct release on that day as well. Like most Metroid games, Fusion is absolutely fantastic, and I would generally recommend going through it. But is it the game for you? I'll do my best to answer that as I tell you what you need to know before diving into Metroid Fusion. Metroid Fusion is the fourth installment in the mainline Metroid series, which yes. are the 2D side-scrollers. Yes. In short, it's the sequel to the Super Nintendo's Super Metroid, and it's the prequel to the Nintendo Switch's Metroid Dread. If you'll be starting up this Game Boy Advance classic, make sure to head into it with an attentive mind, as Fusion is one of the most dialogue-heavy games it is. in the Metroid It franchise. is super dialogue-heavy. If dialogue you're not paying heavy. close attention to the details, I think then for it can a... easily cheapen what is meant to be an extremely immersive experience. For, when you play for the first time, it's actually amazing. When you, f for the first time, you're like, oh shit, lord, what is this dialogue? It's really cool. But then, if you play uh it over and over again you're like yeah i saw it i saw it. i just skipped the dialogue you know they ignored metroid's 35 anniversary wait they did wow wow if it took them that long to come back to metroid i think they're going to reconsider f0 and i don't know dude f0 is like the last game was in 2004. So yeah, they're not going to make another one, okay? Has been too long. So, uh... Let's continue. When it comes to the story and the character developments of the Metroid franchise, Metroid Fusion is easily one of the most integral games to the series. Not only does it give you good insight on the personality and character of Samus, but it's also a fantastic setup to the story of Metroid Dread. Honestly, it's mm -hmm. kind of unfortunate how the Switch isn't getting Metroid Fusion until well after the release of Metroid Dread. I just, I just wish, uh, yeah, Dread did a little bit of weird stuff with the X still being around. As I mean, I mean, it, the whole Ravenbeak arc. Feel, feel a little off, you know what I mean? They forgot, but the fans didn't forget. True. They have the tracks in Mario Kart. That's basically the same thing, right? True. That's all they need. True. Yeah, so what I was saying, uh, yeah, it had a little bit of like weird lore inconsistencies, like Kray died in uh, SM. And then he just so suddenly came back on. And he's like on SR388, right? Oh, wait, was that like a... It was a different planet. Sorry, it was... It's not SR388. It's a different planet. So it indicates the, the ex-parasites have been moved from SR388 SR at some point. Uh, you know... Damn right. Do they explain why some suit looks different in Dread vs. Fusion? That's also another... You know... Uh, yeah, well, here's the thing. Ridley has been... I'm eating brought jalapenos. back as in you know it, it, he either had like robot po robot parts now or whatever here it looked like 
someone, I think Ravenbeak, kept him, kept Kraid a prisoner, whatever the fuck it was there. And the question just lies, why Kraid? You know what I mean? Why was Kraid chosen to be the one who survives into Dread as a prisoner somehow? He... Like what? Did uh, Ravenbeak go to Ze uh, planet Zebes? And then extract him as the last survivor or some shit? It's different. It's a different crate. One of the little... <laughs> God damn it. Okay. All right, man. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah, so there's like that. There's also like uh, Samus suddenly having her zero suit back. Uh, while in fusion, it's kind of like it indicated that her zero fusion was mixed with her power suit and that she had to live like that for the rest of her life, right? And I know you can see like a little bit of, you know, off that still on the suit. But when she dies, she's in her regular zero suit. You know what I mean? She's a little, a little weird. That kind of inconsistencies, etc., 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 etc. But it's still, still, still a good game. It's still a good game. Because in order to understand a lot of the nuanced details of Dread's story, you need to have first played Fusion. Although many Metroid games leave... Just like a piercing, it's there for life. No, but it looked like... Uh, it, it, the explanation was like... The Metroid vaccine was uh, like... The, the mixture of X parasites and Metroid vaccine to her up so much right uh you could at least feel like a you know after effect like that shit if you get exposed to an expert it made it feel a little bit more intense in fusion when the federation thought they could just uh you know experiment with the ex parasites right because they were like, no, look at what, what happened to fucking Samus. And she had the Metroid vaccine. She survived, but look what the fuck happened to her, right? So, uh, that kind of thing. And then now she's, like, back with her regular Zero Suit. I don't know. Maybe it could have been explained. I don't know. But anyway, let's go. View on your own to explore the world. Fuck love SAX, man. Different. SAX was As such a great concept. The most linear Metroid game to date. As your AI Better than Dark Adam Samus, I don't care. ...consistently telling you which specific area to go to. Some Metroid fans see this as a negative, as it can somewhat hinder that feeling of exploration. But in another sense... What a failed opportunity, right? No SAX in Dread. Imagine, imagine if we saw that. Holy shit. You brought the X parasites back. Like, that's the point. You brought them back anyway. So nobody would fucking get mad if you brought SAX at this point. At YAY underscore 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 splitting simply based on number and wave beam. God, I hate, I hate Nev's TTS so much, man. I, I'm talking, he keeps interrupting me. Fusion did a great job making you feel weak. Exactly. Right? All right Extremely linear style does a fantastic job of enhancing your disturbing and chilling experience. Many people who have played Fusion believe that it's the most chilling and scariest Metroid game ever created. If the Emmy sequences made you nervous in Metroid Dread, then Fusion might Bro. send you into a full-on panic attack. SAX, as the game constantly man. builds a tremendous amount of tension before throwing you into an alarming escape sequence. Speaking of which, make sure your patience is intact, as this game is not only scary, but it's also one of the hardest Metroid games ever made. Some boss battles will have you nearly pulling your hair out by the time they're defeated. Although the Switch's custom save points will certainly help in that area yeah, if you're struggling. My only major complaint with the game is that it's extremely short. Safe not states. just for a Metroid game, but for a video game in general. As a casual playthrough may only take you a few hours in real time, assuming you don't struggle with the difficulty curve a bunch. I guess wishing for more isn't necessarily the worst feeling to have at the end of a playthrough, but it is a legitimate criticism nonetheless. It's not my favorite Metroid game, but I absolutely love it. Yeah. And I think you will too. 
So what do you guys think? What is your favorite Metroid game of all time? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching as always. Make sure to like and subscribe for more Metroid and Metroid Zelda Fusion content. and Super and I'll see Metroid. You guys in the next video. Probably you know have like a different place in my heart. You know, up there in my like most favorite ones. I know a lot of people hated Fusion and a lot of people hated Zero Mission 2. I like actually most of the Metroid games, but uh, yeah, Fusion, SM are like on the top. Um, I mean, I basically just love a lot of 2D Metroid games, you know. I love the Prime games too, but I don't like the Prime games as much as the 2D games. But uh, yeah, no, that was good. That was good. Um, my problem was a little bit... that I did not understand the premise. I think it was about um, what you're getting into, what you need to know about. I think it's like when people, yeah, before them, people get into fusion, what they have to. <laughs> you know, okay. Here's the thing though, uh, compared to Super Metroid, at least you won't get lost in fusion. That's all I can say. You know, if you're gonna play fusion, you won't get lost. Don't worry, just ask Adam every time, boom, there you go.